Okay, so now let's talk about Project Risk Management, Chapter 11. Before I get started, let me mention that if you're interested, we have lots of free PMP prep materials at projectprep.org. We've got cheat sheets, full-length practice tests, note cards, lots of stuff that should be pretty helpful. Okay, so there are seven processes in this chapter. Five are in planning, one's in executing, and one in monitoring and controlling. So with plan risk management, we're defining how to conduct risk management on the project. Who are we gonna have involved? What types of tools are we gonna use? And so on. How are we gonna conduct risk management on the project? And then with identify risks, we're detecting risks that may affect the project. And we're gonna put those risks on the risk register. And then we're gonna perform qualitative analysis, which is prioritizing risks by evaluating their probability and impact. And then we're gonna perform a quantitative risk analysis, so numerically analyzing the effects of risks. And this might be we're looking at specific dollar impacts or impacts in days if these risks affect us. And then we're gonna plan risk responses. This is still in the planning process group. Defining strategies and actions to address those risks. So we've identified risks, we've analyzed them. Now we're gonna talk about how we're actually gonna address those and respond to them. And then in executing, we're gonna implement risk response plans, putting the risk response plans into effect. And then we're gonna monitor risks over time, tracking existing risks and identifying and analyzing new risks. So over time, uh, some risks may fade away, others may surface. So we wanna to continue to monitor risks throughout the project. Okay, now let's just talk about an overview of risk. So a risk is an uncertain event that if occurs, has a positive or negative effect on the project. So it could be positive or negative. We oftentimes think about risk just being negative, but there's also positive risk too. Like if you make an investment in a stock, there's a chance it could go down, but there's also a chance or a risk that it could go up, it could be positive. So positive effects or positive risks, we call those opportunities. And negative effects on risks, we call those threats. So it can be both positive and negative. So here's an example of how we write, why, um, we write risks. We use the if-then format. And it's easy then to kind of understand what the risk is and what would happen or what would be the consequence if it impacts us. So here's an example, kind of a silly one. If my kids eat too many donuts, then they could have heart problems later in life. So if this occurs, then this would be the consequence, if then. So here's my suggestion here. You might want to pause the video and just take a minute to write a risk that could you, you could face in your career. Use the if-then format. Now one other note about risk is typically a risk is something that could happen. An issue is something that's happening to us right now. Now as we start planning how we're going to um, conduct risk management, the risk management plan is something we're going to generate. And so it includes things like what's the method we're going to use to identify and handle risks? Who's going to be responsible for doing those things? Are we going to budget or um, uh, budget anything for, the, for handling risks? What are risk categories? How are we going to define for us probability and impact? And um, uh, those are kind of some of the key things you're going to see in the risk management plan. So now let's talk about the identify risks process. We're trying to identify the risks that could impact our project. So here's some of the tools we might be using. We might use checklists. So um, checklists are things we walk through to determine whether risks from previous projects might affect our current project. So as we learn lessons from uh, things that went wrong in previous projects, we might use them as tools to figure out what could affect us on our current project. There's checklists just help us walk through that. And then assumptions analysis. As we put together plans and estimates on our project, we made assumptions. And so we analyze those assumptions to identify risks. And then a SWOT analysis. Uh, so we're looking at strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities and threats. That might help us identify risks that could affect our project, whether positive or negative. And then root cause analysis, doing a research on the underlying causes of an issue. Here are a couple other tools. Brainstorming, obviously, that's just a simple way to identify risks. And interviewing. Interviewing experienced stakeholders and experts to identify risks. We might talk to people who have done a similar project in the past, interview them, and they might give us feedback on what could impact us.
Now the key output here is going to be the risk register. Here's just a simple version of it. Uh, it includes the risk, the type of risk that it is. Is it an opportunity or is it a threat? And then I might document a little bit about probability. What's the likelihood of it impacting us? And if it does impact us, what would be the effect? So probability and impact. Then we would have a score and potentially a mitigation strategy. So this is just a simple example of a risk register. So let's talk about an example of um, risk analysis. Remember, there was two types, qualitative and quantitative. Now think about a donut. Looks pretty good, at least from my op opinion. There's qualitative and quantitative aspects of that donut. And I'm, I'm explaining this because I want to distinguish between the two types of risk analysis. So qualitative aspects of this donut is that it's coated with sugar, it's tan in color, and it tastes delicious. They're just text descriptions. Quantitative is different. We're quantifying numerically characteristics of this donut. It's 10 centimeters in diameter. There's 30 milliliters of strawberry jelly, and the price of a donut is this much, and here's going to be the profit. It's numerical analysis. So with qualitative risk analysis, it's really um, us just uh, doing some text-based analysis. In quantitative analysis, we're actually numerically analyzing the effect, the possible effect of those risks. So let's start with qualitative analysis. It's prioritizing risks based uh, by assessing their probability and impact. We focus on higher priority risks first because we probably can't address all of them. We focus on the ones that are highest priority. And it should include potential impacts on schedule, cost, quality, or performance. And we're also considering how time-sensitive certain risks are. If something could impact us sooner than later, maybe that's something else to consider. And the organization's risk tolerance. Are they willing to accept some risk? If not, if they're really risk averse, we may have to handle things in a different way. Now let's talk a little bit more about probability and impact, because that's what we're defining in this qualitative risk analysis process. So probability is how likely something is to happen, a risk is to happen. And the impact is if it does happen, how bad will it be? So if something is, you know, not that likely, maybe it's a 20 or 30% probability. But if it does impact us, it's really bad. That may be, you know, um, take, uh, help us to prioritize that risk. Really, a lot of times we're looking for things that are high probability and high impact. Those are often the things that we focus in on first. And um, just a note here, the risk management plan is going to define ratings for probability and impact on our project. Now let's continue our activity that we started previously, and you may want to pause the video after um, I mention this. I want you to take your risk that you've identified for your career, you put it in the if-then format, and determine the probability and impact of your risk. And you could just use qualitative categories, because this is qualitative risk analysis. You want to say whether it's high, medium, or low probability, and high, medium, or low impact. Just use your best judgment on it. Now we're going to talk a little bit about how we respond to risks. There's a process in this knowledge area called plan risk responses. And there are strategies for negative risks and also strategies for positive risks. We might respond to them in different ways. So for negative risks, we can avoid them, transfer them, mitigate, or accept them. So if we avoid a risk, we eliminate the threat um, or protect the project from its impact. We eliminate the threat altogether. We avoid it altogether. Now, transferring is when we shift the impact of a threat to a third party. Let's say we're constructing a, a building, and we were paid to do it, but we're not very good at concrete. And we've got to lay concrete as the foundation, and you know we're worried that there might be, or there's a risk, that the concrete might crack. And that um, would mean we'd have to redo it and fix that issue. Maybe what we decide to do is transfer that risk to another company, have them lay the foundation and say, okay, if there's any cracks, you need to fix it and address it. That's us transferring a risk to someone else. We can also mitigate the risk. So do something to reduce the probability of occurrence or its impact. So we don't eliminate the risk altogether. We just try to minimize its probability or impact. We could also accept the risk, just acknowledge that it could happen, but we don't really take any action to address it. And um, when we prioritize risks, the reason why we do that is because we may not be able to address everything. 
and some things we may have to accept. For example, maybe there's some low probability and low impact risks that just don't make sense really to try to address based on our budget. We just have to kind of accept it. Now let's talk about strategies for positive risks because risks can be negative or positive. We might exploit it because we really want these to happen. We eliminate the uncertainty by ensuring it definitely happens. So exploiting it is um, doing something that ensures it does happen. It does definitely happen. Now enhancing it is a little bit different. We just increase the probability and or impacts of an opportunity. We're not 100% confident that it's going to happen, but we enhance the likelihood that it does or the positive impacts of it. We could also share this risk because we want it to, to happen. And because we may need help to get it done, maybe we allocate ownership to a third party who is best able to capture the benefit. So let's say we own some land or we own a mine and there may be gold in that mine and we need someone else, maybe we're not experts in mining gold, but there's a positive risk that there could be gold down in that mine. We share that with an expert in mining and then we, we get some of the rewards and they get some too. So we work with someone who's best able to capture the benefit. We could also accept a positive risk. We just, um, you know, maybe don't do anything to increase its likelihood or its impact. But if it does happen, great. We just don't actively pursue it. Now let's go back to original activity. You identifying a risk for your career. Now what I want you to think about is what you're going to do if that risk impacts you. Will you avoid it? Transfer it? mitigated or accepted? What are you going to do to respond to that risk?